Nice. So our project is LogoGAN, which is automatic generation of logo. So in our team, Jules and Adrian have worked on the model development and the training, and Vikram have worked on the packaging and deployment. So what is the problem? So let's imagine uh, George. He's a young, trendy guy who wants to express to the world who he is. One way people express themselves by wearing brand and showing a sense they are part of a group. But that's not what George wants. He wants to show to the world how unique and special he is. He wants to scream to the world, I'm not anybody, I'm George. And for that, he needs his own brand, his own logo. And that's where uh, our solution came to help. And uh, George is not alone. Personalized gift in the US is a market more than $2 billion by 2022. The creation of personalized image of logo is a smaller market for, than this, of course, but it shows that the higher demand uh, for, for it. And the, the cost of a logo uh, go from 2 to $20 and have, uh, uh, have to be a lot smaller than that if uh, the solution has to disrupt this market. And the proposed solution can go uh, into initially creating automatic uh, logo and then can be incorporated into different uh, pipeline, t-shirt, coffee mug, bags, anything. So the data set we use, we use the large uh, logo data set. The large logo data set is a data set of logo. It was created for making a logo with GAN. And we use a sub part of it, which is a logo, uh, the icon part. Uh, which are 32 by 32 uh, pixel. And one of the, uh, the difficulty uh, with GAN is that uh, when the, the data have a lot of variability, GAN have some difficulty. And to solve that problem, when they create the data set, they have create a noto encoder and have calculated the latent vector for each of the uh, logos, uh, have done a PCA and a k-mean clustering, and have created clustering uh, with 16, 32, 64, and 128 cluster, and use that as label for the uh, logos. And that way, it can help the, the GAN. Uh, in our case, what we did is that we took the 32 cluster and then look uh, each of them and choose one that seems more regular and train the data on that. And also, uh, we try also the conditional GAN and we uh, use the whole data set and train uh, with the, the condition that are from the label of the 128 uh, label. So the baseline model, so what we did is we use a, a model of DC GAN that were uh, taken on GitHub uh, for MNIST and just change the number of uh, color channel and that's usually just it. We see the generative and the discriminative loss, and we see the result at the right. It's not perfect, but that's the baseline model. We also look for other alternative model. We look for variational autoencoder. So variational autoencoder is a little like an autoencoder, but instead of, let's say, encoding the the vector, the image into a, a vector in the latent space, you can kind of try to learn the, the mean and the variance of the distribution. And then you can sample from this uh, sem uh, distribution of the latent space. So we see that it's a sense of I've learned to encode in part the image that we see. But when you random uh, generate random image, it gives mostly uh, bad results. So we won't pr continue with the, this method. So the final solution. So actually, we keep the uh, basic DC GAN, but we just increase the capacity of the model. So actually, we give. Uh, more channel in each uh, layer, four times, and just, just this. We see that the generative loss seems to div diverge, but the, visually the result will be better, so we will keep it. And so, and we train also an, an encoder. So the big box here is the basic uh, DC uh, GAN. And what we did is that when we finished training the GAN, uh, we fixed the, the weight on the generator and tr train an encoder to learn to encode the image into the latent space of the GAN uh, while trying to reproduce the same image. So kind of an autoencoder, but with the generator fixed and the encoding learning. And we will use that for the interactivity with the user.
So the basic uh, the result we see here we, when we have two time more uh, channel in each layer and four time, and that's the solution we will use. And for the encoding part, we see that it try to encode the image. It's not perfect, but try to find something that is similar to it. And we try also conditional GAN. So this war train on all the data uh, using the label of the 128 clusters. So it still give kind of weird result, but it, yeah, that's was done. And for the application, we use uh, the one with only one cluster, the, not the conditional GAN. And the schema. So this is just how we use the different uh, model. So if surely we create a random uh, logo with uh, a noise vector. We can encode two image, create the, the, the latent vector for these and create a new uh, vector for them and then generate a new, a new logo. Or we can take a, a logo, encode it, add noise and create new uh, logo. We will show in the demo uh, these two application. And for the packaging and the deployment, so we use the ML flow for the packaging. Uh, we use Flask for making the application. Uh, then we have uh, containerized uh, uh, in a Docker, and then uh, it was pushed on AWS. And for future work, well, the dataset was published with an article, and in, inside of it, they have done many tricks to. To, they have in this article they have done also again for making the logo and they have used many tricks in it and we haven't used most of these tricks so we should try to use them and see how it will improve the result. Now's the time for the demo. We want to show the demo so as we say we have hosts on AWS so if we uh, look at the 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 application directly, we see the metadata of the application. We can ask to give us some logo with the predict and give new logos. But that's not a good interface for George. Lo uh, George, uh, he needs a website to, to see logo, so where he can click and have new logo that appear for him. But maybe George wants to have a little more control. So maybe he wants to do some interpolation. So George take an image, another one, and ask. So here is the, the image that is most near to the logo one. And this is the image that is most near the logo two. And after that, that's a linear interpolation between the two. And maybe some of them can uh, should the taste of uh, George, but maybe that's still not, not enough for George. Maybe what he really want is he have a logo that uh, is what he, he wants and then just want to modify it uh, to be diff a little different. So here we have the logo with the a distance of zero. So essentially it's all give the most nearest uh, logo that look like the input. But let's say we take uh, something that is a little different, then we will have logo that look a little different, not that much as we see. Then we can take something a little bigger and then the logo began to be a little diff more different. And then if we take something uh, more big again, then it should give even more different result. And so that's one way to George to choose some logo that he wants. That's the end of the demo.